Hello everyone, welcome to Middle Fantasy. I'm your host Zach, and back by popular demand, we are doing pointless nerd arguments. For people that haven't seen this, uh, me and my friend Paul are pretty much going to argue something completely pointless, so if you don't want to watch just pointlessness, just turn this off right now because I don't think anyone's going to find some deeper meaning. Paul, you're here. Do you find deeper meaning in all this stuff? I, I, I find deeper meaning in the pointlessness. Oh, I mean, that's deep, Paul. Did you go to film school? Oh, something like that. <laughs> Okay. I, on a scale of like pretentiousness, I'm like a one. Oh, really? Do you like compare Criterion releases by like dates and see which one's better? Of, of course. I, I, I have them all organized in my room. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Right next to your Pulp Fiction poster. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's Pulp Fiction, but it has Stormtroopers. So it's on another level. It's on another level, bro. Oh, it's like the um, what is it? The Princess Leia that has the David Bowie lightning that says Rebel Rebel right next to it? Yeah. Yeah. And then right across from it is my cl Clockwork Orange uh, poster. <laughs> On your collection of Funko Pops, obviously. Yeah, of course. Too. So, Paul, what is our pointless argument for today? The pointless argument today is who has the dumbest name in Star Wars? <laughs> okay. Uh well, I think we're going to be doing this prequel, sequel, and original trilogy. Uh, Paul, in your opinion, what is the first name that comes to mind? Well, obviously the first name that came to mind is Zori Bliss. That sounds like a ice cream special like at... Um... <laughs> a Dairy Queen? Yeah, a Dairy Queen. Is that like the blizzard, like they like pour it over and then like it doesn't come out? Yeah, and they just put like little stars. It's, it's probably a cross promotion with like the movie. So they just throw like little glitter stars in it. Oh, yeah. Get yourself a Zori Bliss today. Okay, that one's good. Though the one I always think about, and it always just funny because I think George Lucas is just funny, is Porkins. Like, that is such a mean name to have. Like, he's just writing it. I think I'm going to write uh, a character that's uh, named Porkins. And then they get a person that obviously, like, yeah, that's Porkins right there. Like, in the casting thing. Because wasn't that guy also in Indiana Jones and also in Batman? I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm sure you can fact check that. I think I just got that completely right. And my brain says yes. Okay, other really dumb names is Kid Fisto. Ugh. I mean, they sold that to kids. I guess it's like, I want to I wanna hang out with Kid Fisto today at the Disneyland parks. I think George Lucas just went through his web history and just went through a random generator. I think that's how he came up with Kid Fisto. Oh, exactly. That's exactly. That's the same map maker that I probably use for like naming like Tatooine and Datooine. They're just one letter off almost. I'm sure it's probably not the case. But then like, Okay, other really, really bad names. I mean, isn't there, like... I want to say in Solo, for one of the promotions, there was, like, Crab McScissor Punch or something that was, like, so weird that I remember seeing because you know it's a bad sign when, when you have the Denny's menu and they have to give you collectible cards for Solo, a Solo story. Oh, man. Uh, Is that, like, at Spy Kids where they gave you, like, a card so you can figure out what's happening in the movie? No, I remember, is that the one where they gave you, like, the smell thing, or was yeah. that the Rugrats? No, or I think it was probably both. It was for Rugrats Gone Wild. So you needed a um, a promotional card from Denny's to figure out who was on the screen? That's kind of uh, that's kind of obnoxious, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, they did the exact same thing for David Lynch's Dune before you even got into the movie theater. The person, like, the, the, the squeaky face, you know, teen voice guy gave you like a glossary of things that you needed to know about the movie before you even saw the movie is this all true oh this is all true i really want to get one of those they're, they're like really expensive but um okay what are some other ones i mean there's like luke skywalker which isn't bad but like what is a skywalker that's like such a pretentious name like i'm skywalking yeah he's skywalking on these haters but um i what always i found jarring about star wars names is that how come some like Luke or Poe or even Ray or Finn too? Like they they sound like real world names, and then all of a sudden you get like Dexter's Jetsters and Salacious B Crumb. I mean, what does the B even stand for? In uh, you know, there's probably like an en entire novel devoted to him and his like little B thing, and it's probably like bodacious or something really really silly. So Salacious Bougie Crumb, right? Oh yeah, exactly. He has, like, all Gucci stuff because he hangs out with Jabba the Hutt all day. Does uh, Tatooine have a Rodeo Drive? Oh, yeah, no, it's called the uh, Tustdeo Drive or something like that. I don't know. Uh, man, there's, like, other really bad names. Like, I mean, we have Starkiller Base. Like, 
how pretentious do you have to be to name your base that destroys people Star Killer? I guess the Death Star, but I think wasn't that supposed to be a code name? Like, just imagine like Palpatine being like, "Yeah, we've we've made this thing. We called it the Death Star," and everyone's like, uh, c "Could you run that by again?" I mean, it's the Health Star. Yeah, that's that's what it's used for. <laughs> also reminds me when Ronald Reagan was clever and declared the, um, his new missile attack system was the Star Wars. Oh, the Star Wars for Ronnie Reagan. I I'm pretty sure he thought he was clever and made it up his home self. I mean, th that's a good one, too. I mean, it's also even funnier if we go to the toys, because there's, like, some really bad ones. Like, um, was it my favorite one's Prune Face? Prune Face is a good one. There's also, like, Yak Head. And then, obviously, I can't talk about it without talking about the Blue Snaggletooth, right, Paul? Oh, I, had, I, I don't know about this Blue Snaggletooth. Oh. Other than every Star Wars documentary explaining it to me exactly what a blue snaggletooth is. What is a blue snaggletooth, Paul, for everyone? So it's clickbait. <laughs> so basically, a blue snaggletooth is just was a variant of a background character in the Tatooine playset. And I think they only had an image of his head. So they built him to full character size, even though the actual character in the film was only tiny or, I mean, half the size. I mean, that's the exact same thing with, like, Rocket Fighting Boba Fett, but then we'll be here for, like, six hours. Like, even, like, because we've been rewatching, both of us have been watching Django and, like, seeing, like, Django Fett is basically the exact same character, except he doesn't break out, like, a machine gun out of a coffin. Oh, man, there's, like, Boba, but now I'm thinking of, like, the tea, like... Wait, is there, like, a promotion now for, like, Boba Fett? Like, you get Boba tea? Yeah, I... I, I you, you just hit the nail on the head. I don't think there's a Boba, Boba Fett promotional item out there yet. At least that I know of. Oh. Although, uh, I was a fan when, uh, Disneyland, when they had the Django Fett heads that you can drink out of. Oh, yeah. Like, somebody at marketing knew exactly what they were doing. <laughs> oh, you don't, don't you... You don't open it from, like, the neck part. You open it from the head part. So, it's yeah. almost like... You get, like, a twofer. You get, like... Django Fett's head like in the thing but also at the same time you have like your Temple of Doom reference with like the monkey brains like you're eating Django Fett's head I want to I've never bought the cup but I wanted to wonder if like Tomoe Moyes's face is just like smiling smiling at you at the bottom of the cup oh you know exactly Paul exactly you want to know what my superpower is glug 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 ugh that's for, uh, you're right I forgot to down a beer I could, I could down a beer in that in his head yeah, exactly. Oh, you're you're right. That's a superpower in Aquaman. Yeah, it's it's like really weird because especially again going back to the toys, there were some really really weird ones. And then there's like the you know it's obviously like the clever naming conventions of just like well we're gonna name this planet this like Tatooine. It's just like oh well, this is the desert planet. Hoth is cold as shit, but we're gonna call it Hoth. What is it like Degoba? Like I think isn't it like George Lucas's convention was just changing names around slightly. Like there's the Admiral Akbar is um isn't he like a Mon Calamari or something? I was gonna say, remember in uh Rogue One, I remember sitting in the theater like Wobani, I was able to put that anagram, like it uh, I was able to put it together like right away while I was watching the film. Wait, what anagram? Wobani. There was a planet named Wobani. Oh yeah. And it's obviously uh anagram for Obi-Wan. Oh, you're you're right, or Ak two. Which is supposed to be act two of a movie. Wow, that, that JJ is so clever. His yeah. scripts are just flawless. I mean, then you have like the other people. I mean, Solo's fun, except until you get to Solo the movie where it's like, what's your last name? I don't got one. Well, then you're Solo then. It's like, can you just, his name could just be that and it just sounds cool and awesome. Though for the longest time as a kid, I kept thinking his name was Hans. Hans Solo. I'm like, why doesn't he have a German accent? And then, like, you, if you watch, like, Indiana Jones, you get horribly confused. Also, uh, correct me, I, I'm, I'm Hispanic, so I should know this. It doesn't, it doesn't Solo come from a, uh, isn't that basically a Hispanic word? I'm sure it is. I mean, Solo is, like, Solo. Same as with, like, Chewbacca is the Russian word for dog, or, like, Limbaka. No, it's something like that. That's, uh, that's kind of confusing to me, because, like... Like, I know Star Wars language is basic, but, I mean, we have different English denominations. I mean... <laughs> denominations, are we... Are there churches now for English? 
the, I guess there would be those like the Oxford comma and the regular comma. So you might be right about that, Paul. There are different denominations of English language dialects within the within the Star Wars universe. So I guess there's different versions of basics that they're pulling out of on like our languages. Yeah, I mean that's the interesting thing as well when it comes to the special editions is they change like basic English into like was Arabesh like the like the tractor beam. They change some of that stuff. That's those are some really good additions. The one that I always thought was funny, Paul, is that people were like, why does Holdo do the Holdo maneuver should be Admiral Akbar?" And my response is, do you really want someone smashing into a fleet named Akbar?" I think the PR team and Twitter would just have a field day with that, everyone that makes that thing, because that's really, really dumb. Oh, man, like, again, we can go on for hours. I mean, like, my favorite one I think everyone likes to talk about is, like, Woodrow Hood, who's the guy who holds, like, the ice cream maker, to the point of where now in The Mandalorian, every time they have, like, a piece of information now, they just have that ice cream machine. And I love that, that that's now just a part, and he has, like, his whole backstory and stuff. Even, like, Darth Vader's kind of cool, because it's, like, isn't it, like, German for father a little bit? I know uh, Kanye West went on a rant recently, because um, he said that Lucas is in his opinion he sees lucas as um the center of the universe in star wars so that's why he named himself his main character luke is because it's in reality lucas. luke's uh luke's story is lucas's story so well i mean if you get down to the original draft of it there's like mace windy which comes and you know becomes mace windu and there's just like a plethora of like Weird stuff. If you haven't had a chance to read like, The Secret History of Star Wars, it's a fascinating read about the first draft. Though, if you talk about the naming convention, the stupidest or like the name of the Sith, because they're all like evil McHitler f a little bit. It's like the Emperor is like Darth Sidious. So, like, okay, like Darth Vader's fine. You have Darth Maul. So, who was that? Was uh, Tarkin supposed to be like a diss on Tolkien? That, you know, that could be true. I mean, maybe. I mean, that's the thing, though, is, like, you know, Star Wars is supposed to be, like, Flash Gordon a little bit. Like, you have, like, really silly names, but maybe there's Grand Moff Tarkin or Tolkien. Oh, man. Did he want to do, like, I want to make a, a Lord of the Rings movie. I'm going to get uh, Harrison Ford to be Frodo, and then I'll get Mark to be Sam, and uh, we'll, we'll get Carrie to be, like, Gollum or something. Although you're forgetting about the best... Uh... Species name in all of Star Wars. Which one would that the be? The Nemoinians. Oh, the Nemoinians. You, you mean the racist caricatures of Japanese people? Oh, no. I think that's going to wrap up this pointless argument. I'm sure we, people have already turned this off and like, oh, God, I hate you guys so, so much. Well, everyone, thank you all so much for watching this. Stick around. We're going to be doing more of these in the near future. Well, I just wanted to say thank you all so much. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, subscribe down below. Please submit some pointless arguments. I'd love to hear some in the comments down below. What is the silliest Star Wars name? And what are some fun arguments that we could talk about? Because we'd love to do more of these. Well, everyone, thank you all so much for watching. And like always, may your food and drink ever be tasteful. And may your books be filled with fantasy and adventure. Bye, everyone. See ya.